Hello everyone, we're four and we're doing more moving four with and don't Okay, so we'll start with the fourth history. Uh, we're gonna start in the in the corner that's Henry Ford. Um, in 1903, the Ford franchise became the first Ford automobile in Detroit. So I'm very, very exciting. Um, they're the first classless automobile, so Henry's whole thing was that he didn't want to make a car for the rich and the wealthy. He wanted a car where everyone could buy it. It wasn't just for a specific group of people. Um, his goal, which is still in place today, is to help build a better world where every person is free to move and pursue their dreams. Um, this is pretty much accomplished by Ford himself, uh, which now they have produced 188,000 more cars than any other automotive <coughs> company. So this past year, they produced 1.7 million cars in Germany. That's a lot of cars. Um, moving on to affordable and efficient. Going off of what I was saying before, he is really into, or was, I guess, into this affordable automotive industry. He didn't want one car to just be for one single person. He wanted this classless society where he wasn't just focused on one main group of people. This car was pretty much for everyone. Um, and so his customers obviously really enjoyed this. They weren't focused on this wealth thing. It was more of just, this is a car, you can buy it. Uh, so customer and employee benefit. This is the top relationship at Ford. Um, they've employed over 57,000 hourly employees, which is more than any other automotive company. They were also the first to employ people with disabilities. After World War I, they took in war veterans, which was a huge step for all industries. Um, and they promised close relationships with their customers. Uh, they have a lot of different programs, one of them being the customer uh, loyalty program, where you can get free repairs on certain cars in a program. And then they also have this new buyback program where um, after, obviously after COVID, a lot of people lost their jobs. So if you were to lose your job um, within one year of buying your car, uh, they would buy it back from you and then you can earn your money back up and you can rebuy your car. So then going on to sustainability, this is obviously a new one in automotive industries. It's become really big throughout society. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into it just because we do talk a lot about it but they've committed to carbon neutrality by 2050, which is really something big for cars. And then by 2035, they plan to use 100% renewable energy for all manufacturing, which is something that is pretty crazy for Ford and all other companies. So before we get into the marketing mix, it's really important that we understand that Ford works in three segments. The first one is the automotive segment, this one earns most of the revenue for the company because it covers the most. So we're talking development, distribution, and servicing of Ford vehicles. So development is anything built in the factories, <coughs> distributing the uh, cars to the dealerships and then to the consumers, as well as the servicing of the vehicles both during purchase and after purchase. The second segment is mobility. This is also involved in distribution, but also has to do with their other business. Um, has anyone heard of Argo AI? No? Yeah, I didn't either. Um, <laughs> it is a self-driving software company. They're currently working with Lyft right now to get a self-driving car up. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then Spin Company. Has anyone seen these electric scooters anywhere ever? Okay, one, two. Okay, so a few. Okay. So you might see these in a lot of urban areas or in camp college campuses. We don't have them. We have a pretty small campus. Um, essentially, you just have to download an app and you can scan it and have a public transportation electric scooter going. Ford owns this company as well. So the last segment is Ford Credit. It has to do with their financial services and leasing that they offer. It's a little bit more boring compared to the spin company. So that's very fun. And then we're going to move on to the product. Okay, so this is probably all of those segments. So the first thing you think about when you think about Ford is probably their tangible products like their cars, their buses, their trucks, and auto parts. But this also could be their intangible products like their credit company, Argo AI, and Spin. Place, 
Uh, if you're going to buy a Ford vehicle, you're probably going to go to a Ford dealership. They have over 3,000 dealerships in the United States. Um, you can also purchase their products at other stores, the Ford Motor website, and their credit company. You can purchase their services. Uh, you can also argue that buying a Ford car from Joe down the road is also buying a Ford vehicle at a place, but yeah. Promotion. So Ford's most prominent form of promotion is advertising. Has anyone seen this commercial with Matthew McConaughey? For real? Not that many? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Lincoln is a luxury brand of cars mm. that Ford owns. Um, I'm kind of shocked that I'm about to do this. Okay, so um, this was a 2014 ad for the 2014 Lincoln SUV. Mm. It was a very oddly philosophical, weird video <laughs> that got a lot of parodies. Um, SNL did one with Jim Carrey, Ellen did one, and I think there was like a South Park commercial. So this commercial, because of all of that, these jokes online and these memes, at the time, Lincoln was really low in their sales. And with that campaign alone, they were able to double their market share and go up to 10% in three years. Um, has anyone seen any of the new Ford F-150 commercials? Yeah, like they're the complete opposite of that because the Ford F-150 isn't exactly a luxury vehicle. It's all about uh, building Ford tough and grr and truck. <laughs> 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 um, they also use sponsorships as a form of advertising. A lot of their advertising goes to sports and festivals. Um, has anyone been to Ford Field for a game or a concert? Yeah, I saw One Direction there in middle school. <laughs> Okay, not really um, So they approach their pricing with the market-oriented strategy. So this is when they can base their prices off of the market, what people are willing to buy. So with their Ford product, with the 2024 EcoSport, Sport, it starts at 19000 I don't know about you, that's expensive for me, but I guess if you're like a homeowner who can buy a brand new car, that's probably reasonable. Of course, this will go up as you add additions, same with the Ford F-150. That truck could easily go up to about $50,000 if you didn't know the accessories. But as a base, you're going to get a $30,000 car. Mm. Now, when you use a luxury vehicle like Lincoln, they use a premium pricing strategy. They're able to price their products slightly above their immediate competition, um, which gives a good sense of quality. It's a nice vehicle. And of course, these also start at $37,000 and start at $86,000. And as you get all your additions, the price will go up. So these are Ford's marketing objectives and performance. So Ford uses a differentiated uh, marketing strategy. So this means they're gonna segment uh, customers based on the type of vehicle. For So like Elaine was saying, for the Ford F-150, it's built tough, you know, so they're gonna segment uh, mainly to men with a average income. Uh, so overall, Ford is mainly uh, targeting customers that have an average income because that's mainly most of their products. So right now Ford's main goal is to produce all electric vehicles, which will be called uh, Ford Pro. And they're teaming up with the company Electrify, which is just a tech company. And they expect to have 600,000 electric vehicles by 2030 and shipment of the Ford Pro e-transit van and F-150 is beginning in 2022. So does this mean that the target market is gonna change? They're gonna wanna target more uh, eco-friendly customers and probably customers with also a higher income. So for the most part, Ford has always been considered as a pretty ethical company. Uh, Ford actually makes their employees take ethical courses regarding information on how to avoid things like bribery, uh, corruption, conflicts of interest, and so on. And uh, they also recently started the Ford Fund, which is a nonprofit organization. This organization, student teams will work together to solve issues like challenge, uh, uh, safety challenges and mobilities, just overall trying to make cities into a better place. Okay, so for strengths, Ford has a very strong brand image. They're 118 years old, which means that they're doing something right for their customers. And they have a very effective innovation process. So right now, they're in the making of electric cars. 
and also for the Ford F-150 Lightning truck, which will be pretty expensive. We can move on to our weaknesses. They have a high cost. As Elena had showed, the starting prices for them aren't that cheap. And they have a very limited global production network. So in the top right, that's one of the two major plants in India that was shut down just this year in September, which had actually which 15,000 people had lost their jobs, which really affected the Indian company. They do have a very over-dependence on Europe's market, so they don't have many plants in Europe and other places. So opportunities, they have growth through product development. So just overall working on their previous recall cars and trying to just make sure that everything is going to be smooth with this. And then lastly is their threats. So with more electronic cars coming into the company, there will definitely be some issues with that. Just being a car company alone is something that will be hard to maintain. So with Tesla and Nissan and all these other car companies introducing the electric cars, they won't really work out that well. So moving on. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the environmental analysis report. Uh, to start off, some global factors. Uh, in some foreign countries, there's trade barriers put on U.S. products, especially vehicles, uh, which can be an issue for Ford, considering it would be more expensive for them to get their products there into a country where there might already be other companies that are selling their product and don't have these uh, taxes on their products. Um, like I said, those other competitors in other countries like Toyota, Nissan, Honda in Japan, um, they actually, the Japanese currency is worth less than the United States currency. So for them to produce a vehicle to bring to the United States, it actually costs them less. Um, so that can affect Ford overall. Um, so uh, also Ford added a hundred new jobs uh, for global marketing because they're trying to expand their global division, get their products across the globe instead of being heavily reliant on the United States. Um, some technological forces, obviously electrical, electric vehicles are a huge thing right now. And uh, Ford, uh, to deal with this, Ford, uh, took their Mustang F-150 and Blue Transit van um, to now be electric. And they did this because they, they want to take a product that everybody knows and loves and their customers know the quality of, but then bring a new life into it with the addition of the electric version. Um, so this new push for renewable energy uh, can be an opportunity for Ford because not only can they push forward with electric vehicles, they can push forward with other fuels, um, whether that's hydrogen, biodiesel, they have plenty of opportunity in that sense. Um, Ford aims to be all electric or all renewable at some point in the future. I believe it was 2035 is what I was researching. Um, they put $22 billion into uh, developing more electric vehicles in that time frame. Um, so Tesla obviously is a big uh, threat for Ford. Uh, Tesla in China has a monopoly on the electric vehicle industry right now. Most people want their vehicles over a typically gas vehicle company like Ford. Um, and then there's other companies like GM and Chrysler uh, who present competition in the United States because they present competition on things like diesel vehicles, like work power vehicles, um, so they're able to make the same as Ford is. Um, another threat is that most car companies actually have the same uh, technology um, and resources. So everything that Ford can do, every other company can do too. So uh, they need to come up with some ways to market their product to make more people want their product over the other. So 
So for the competitor analysis, I chose Tesla because like Ben said, they're gonna be a major threat to Ford when they're producing all electronic vehicles. So Tesla mainly targets uh, environmentally conscious, high income uh, consumers. Uh, their marketing strategy is known as zero dollar marketing. So this means that they actually don't use paid advertisement. So instead they're gonna rely on things like uh, social media and word of mouth. And they also heavily rely on uh, Elon Musk for promotion through his uh, social media accounts and uh, his product display. And, uh, through the marketing mix, they, the, their product and distribution is definitely the most important. Uh, Tesla is, like Ben said, it's one of the first uh, companies to provide all electric vehicles. And through distribution, Tesla actually distributes directly to the customer instead of going through uh, car dealerships like other companies. So I just put together a quick SWOT analysis of uh, <laughs> Tesla. So main strengths are innovation and ba battery life. And uh, main weaknesses are mainly production issues and uh, the high cost of the cars. Opportunities, they could self-produce their own batteries, they could lower their price, and threats is that it's an upcoming competitive market, such as Ford. So what it means for Ford, so Ford actually already has some advantages over Tesla, so they have more brand awareness and they also have a bigger market. In the top right picture there, that's all Ford's operations around the world. Whereas Tesla, I think they have three in the US and one in China. And so how can, oh, uh, Ford is also more involved in promotion. Like I said, Tesla does not use paid advertisement or Ford uses paid and other forms of promotion like online, social media, and word, and, uh, word of mouth. So what can, so what can Ford do to compete with Tesla? First, they could increase their use of social media after seeing how well it does work for Tesla. And second, with uh, Tesla's weakness of cars being too expensive for some people, while the demand is higher than the production rate, I think that it'd be smart for Ford to produce uh, less, ex less expensive vehicles with uh, greater production than Tesla. And I think that is possible because Ford's uh, operations are, are bigger.